Let me know in the comments to figure out what verse I was referencing. There's a, there's a, that's a little that's a that's a little uh Easter egg hunt <laughs> that you could do. See? There's an autumn special edition Bible that has a little quote written right. by Autumn herself. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Hello huh. and welcome to Bible, Bible conversations. conversations. Not brave conversations. Yeah, don't 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 get this mixed up. But don't click off the video though. Yeah, don't this is that. good too. <laughs> <laughs> Please say. Bible conversations is a little segment that we do mm -hmm. because y'all don't read. True. So we're gonna read and then we're gonna talk about stuff that's gonna make you wanna read. Basically, yeah. Period. Cause I was I was gonna say I was gonna read for you, but I can't do that. Yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you haven't watched our other video we did on Genesis 1, um, to be honest, you don't have to watch that one, but like it's kind of weird that you kind of jump in. Like you jump in yeah, the head. That's like a little that's a little that's a little suspect. For real, man. Like I don't like that. Right. You make me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, it <laughs> very. <laughs> So please go watch our first episode of Bible Conversations where we did a deep dive on Genesis 1. Okay? Yeah. You don't want to miss it. It's funny. Yeah, very much so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, we're doing a little things different this time though. Okay? Because mm -hmm. like in the first episode, I read the whole chapter for y'all. And like I said, I'm not doing that no more. Okay? You have yeah. to read it for yourself. I could read it for you, but then like... How are you going to understand it for yourself? True. Period. And so what we're going to do this time is I am going to encourage you guys to read it yourself. And then we're just going to have a conversation about what stood out the most to us and what we learned from mm. our own reading of the chapters. Welcome to your Bible book club. Right. Welcome to the Bible book club club <laughs> all right let's get to get into it okay because yes. we don't want y'all we don't want y'all to, to go um don't leave me I'm just <laughs> Please. okay so just to give you like a rundown like a summary or at least this is my this is what stood out to me in genesis 2 like everything that it has okay so we have the creation of man and women definitely okay that's an obvious one we got god's provision and i'm talking about his creation of the garden of eden very much so. Okay. And then we have God's command, mm -hmm. you know, when he starts talking about the trees, the tree of life and the tree of good knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. And then we also have human responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, God gave us our job. He gave us our job position. <laughs> he like, we put in, we didn't even have to put in application, y'all. We was hired on the spot. What you talking about? I wish I wish they like, do that for no me. No interview. We came in, came out with a job. Okay. We failed though. Yeah. Um <laughs> it also talks about marriage. Yeah. Okay. And then obedience to God's command. Mm. Right? Um, that's what I picked up from the chapter. Is there anything I'm you think I missed? Uh no, not really. Oh, also the shamelessness. That they ah. had, or they, I guess, didn't have. They had. They had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You was right. You yeah. was right. They had the shamelessness. That okay, so yeah, just talk about like how. I guess that talks about how how life was was before chapter three. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Two men. Two men. Dun dun dun. Yeah. Okay, so the first verse we're going to get into is verse seven. Now I'll read the verses for y'all. Like that's, that's a, that's an easy thing to do. Okay. Of course. So I don't mind reading the verses. So let's read verse seven. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breath into his nostrils, the breath of life and man became a living being. Now you are the one that really pointed out this verse. So I'm gonna let you go first. And I'm going to ask you like, first off, why did this verse stand out to you the most when you was reading chapter two? Oh, man. Yeah, Four score and seven years of old. <laughs> <laughs> he 
took dirt. Dirt. Soil. He took soil. Okay, we going scientific. He took soil and soil. created life from that. Mm-hmm. And just like we do today, we take soil and Ooh. create life from it. But of course, it's not on the scale of God's creation because we all know he's the ultimate Ultimate creator. cooker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he be cooking. He the <laughs> chef, bro. Gordon Ramsay could never. Okay, for real, bro. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay, it's raw. How it's raw. It? Exactly. Right. God, like, it's raw. raw. Okay. What Let's are you? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> An but, idiot sandwich. Go ahead. But, nah, like, he is so, it's so, I, I just love, like, just seeing things happen in the Bible and looking at how we function through life now and just seeing us doing those same things, but just on a smaller scale. Because it really right. shows. It really shows how great of a creator he is. And it highlights, it kind of just gives you further proof that we really were made in his image. Very much Like, so. I discussed this in the first episode. Like, it's not referring to, like, physical image, mm. like, visual image. Well, it, it probably is. We don't know. We won't know until we, <laughs> until we, until we, we leave. You know, we touch that, you know? Uh, we touch that base. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like... When he was like in my image, he was saying basically, we could we have aspects mm. of him within us, not all, but yeah. we have certain ones of him within us, and that's one of the things. The fact that he's a creator, we are also creators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, um, this this literally just came to me, mm. but a lot of people like they can they 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 feel like God kind of communicates with them through the wind. Oh, Some yeah. Some people even say that the wind is sometimes God breathing mm. on them. And I never thought about it that yeah, way. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, because I heard... I've heard just, <laughs> there's a <Yeah>. lot... <laughs> Look, I have a lot You're of just fun. like, you feel that wind is God. You just... <laughs> that man on your neck, you're like... <laughs> you like... You bro. <laughs> literally, right, literally. Yeah. oh my god <laughs> okay but it's like um, a lot of people that was actually brought to me or that was brought to my um attention by a friend of mine who was talking about like his beliefs when it comes to god and how he communicates with him because god communicates with everyone differently. in so many different ways like yeah. he communicates in the way that you that you would understand Stand. him exactly mm -hmm. So, of course, like, my friend was talking about that, and he was like, oh, I feel like the wind is God, like, breathing, you know, and that's how he talks to me. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. It's giving, right. it's it's giving, giving airbender. Yeah, it's <laughs> giving last <laughs> airbender, you know, Legend you know? of Korra. I'm going to stop. Okay. But One thing he's definitely brought to my attention with the help of, of with, with, with honestly, with me starting with Genesis, like, ever since I started Genesis, I've been, have, I've been feeling more and more eager to just get out there, bro. And I'm not outside talking, just, I'm to not, really yeah. um, appreciate his creation. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it, it makes you look at the elements and I'm talking about um, water, earth, fire, air, <laughs> you know, metal. Uh, and just like look <laughs> at the birds and be like, wow, like, you know, yeah. it's nice. It's yeah. nice. I embrace, embrace the earth. <laughs> embrace it. Go green. <laughs> like, <laughs> 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 okay so like for me when i read what what stood out to me when i read verse seven mm. um and i gotta refer to my notes but but like god for the other things like the sun and the stars and the birds and the animals and stuff yeah. you see how like god created them just by using his words right but when it comes to humans he used a whole different method he used the dust from the ground Right. But then to add to it, he gave us the breath of life. And so I, when I read that, I realized that, like, that's what makes humans different from all the other creations. Um, different. And like he made us from dust, which when you think about dust, like dust is fragile. Right. Mm, it's yeah. easily you can easily just blow it away. Easy. Um, clean it up. Throw it away. Stuff like that. And so when God made us from dust, it highlights the fact that 
humans are fragile. Like, y'all. Very much so. We were actually talking about this the other day. We were we were naming animals that could kill us. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we were naming animals that could kill us with one hit. True. Right? Oh, we, yeah. yeah. We were doing that. Yesterday. We were talking about how, like, one hit from a kangaroo. Yeah, one, one kick. One hit from a horse. One kick. One kick from a horse. <laughs> right. And, like, you know, just, like, just all the animals who have that power. Like, one hit from an ape. Oh, yeah. Who absolutely. have that power and ability to 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 end our lives and yet we're still we still have more dominion over them and we were like why is that you're the you know and then we highlighted because like we we have we have more uh mental capacity but after reading chapter seven it's because we have the breath of life from god placed with inside us very much so so although we are in these fragile human bodies we have what other creations don't, and that is basically a spirit. Yeah. From God, housed into our bodies. It's actually, it highlights also that's why when we die, we become dust again. Because, oh, yeah, yeah ashes, see, we become ashes. Yeah, we become dust again. We start to decay, and what's eventually, I think, I think bones decay. I don't know. I ain't dead. I'm not supposed to know. <laughs> I don't really know how that goes. Well, actually, no, because we we still covering up bones that were like thousands of years old. True. So, also, like you know, fossils and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but you know, we become our our flesh and everything else becomes uh, dust. dust again. True. And so, and our spirit is what lives on. It lives on. And so, yeah, that's what that's basically what I got from that. But also, um, I have a question. Oh. A question for you, but also a question for our audience. Blue's Clues. What gives... I'm sorry, I'm burping. Excuse me. That's not ladylike. Okay. Um, what, <laughs> <laughs> what gives humans glory? Is what? it the dust or the breath of life within the dust? Well, that's that's that, that that question seems simple. I I believe it's the breath of life within the dust. Exactly. So it just it just kind of gives highlight to the fact that humans we are dependent yeah. upon God. Yeah. God's intention when He made us was for us to be dependent on Him. Very much so. Just like how animals in the ecosystem is dependent upon us. And again, it highlights what you said, how God created us in his image. This is another thing that he mirrored um, as far as like our relationship with him and then our relationship with his, his other creations. Yeah. So like our lives are models of how life should be between us and God. Mm. We are dependent upon God because we are made from fragile material, but we also have, an extra element to help us get through life, which is a spirit, the breath of life that God gave us in particular. So feel special. (laughs) When your mom told you you were special when you failed that math test, she was right. She was right. You're very special. You're very special. Very. Period. You could say, yes, mom, I am special. Yeah. Because God made me specially. Or dad. Or dad. Yeah. We won't forget about you guys. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so that's why and be, it's because we're dependent upon God which is why we are called to worship God and to serve him only is because Very we cannot so. we cannot function without him yeah so you could try <laughs> good luck with that yeah good you going for you, you're fighting and you're fighting a war with a pickaxe my guy not a pickaxe yeah pickaxe I mean that's a pretty good weapon but come on now it's way too heavy. You can't lift that to kill someone. I'm pretty I don't sure. Know. Yeah, I'm about to well, say I'm pretty. I mean, like, if you're strong enough, but, like, you're going to get tired. Why are we talking about this? Okay. I don't, okay. I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I'm gonna <laughs> 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 it's pretty bad. I'm okay. Gonna Let's move on to verse 18, because that is the verse that stuck out to me. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. Yeah. I will make him a helper comparable to him. 
So there's actually a lot just from this one verse. And one thing I learned from reading the Bible is that you can literally just read one verse and give so many life lessons from that one verse, which is why, like, don't try to speed through the Bible like it's just some book that you have to complete. <laughs> speed run. If you focus on one verse for one year, I would rather you do that than to just speed through the whole thing and then miss a bunch of life lessons that could help you out, especially in what you're going through right now. A Bible reading speed run would be crazy video. I'm just saying, but yes, do that. Do do what I was saying. Don't listen to him. I just told you not to. Yeah, don't do that, but I'm just saying that would be a crazy, like. <laughs> okay. Back to the verse. God recognized that Adam had something he was lacking. Yeah. You know? I actually want to, I noticed that this is the first time that God said that something that something wasn't good because in mm. chapter one, he was all, he always ended off like, and it always ended off with God created this and this and this. And he saw that it was good. It was good. Yeah. Right. It mm. is up to this point, this verse that God first says that, Oh wow, this is not good. Foreshadowing. Right. And so what is the thing that's not good? Is that a woman was not created yet. Yeah. So women, this doesn't mean that we're better. I'm just saying, God didn't say it was good until we came on the scene. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. But anyway, y'all yeah, wrote notes because I'm a nerd. <laughs> he mad because he ain't write notes. <laughs> I am ha I'm very happy I ain't writing notes. He just saying that for y'all. <laughs> write notes. <laughs> Look, if y'all got a good brain, y'all ain't got to write notes, bro. Oh, so you saying I ain't got a good brain? I ain't say that. You said that. God said I'm special. <laughs> God said I'm special. Yeah. We are special. But you spit. <laughs> Back in Genesis 1, yeah. verse 26, when God made um, humans, yeah. he said that he made them man and woman, male and female. Yeah. Right? I don't think people realize the importance of that verse. And, like, I like to do deep dives of verses because I, I always ask, like, why did he feel the need to specify that? Or, like, why did he feel the need to go deeper on that point? And this is a point that... God put into this this verse is because of the importance of like gender, right? Mm -hmm. And so when he the noun they that's used in that in that um in that verse is plural, mm -hmm. meaning that God's intention was he was he always intended to have more than one human, right? When he made it wasn't just like mm -hmm. oh I make Adam and then that was it. He was like in a wide range. Yeah, he humans. was thinking. Ahead, like I always, God knows the future, so of he's course, yeah. he's thinking ahead when he's when he makes decisions and stuff. And so, when God made Adam and he saw him like you know alone in the world, yeah, he was like, yeah, let me. He was like, yeah, this not good. I think he need help now, especially when God gave Adam the command to tend to the earth, Absolutely. and he realized. I feel like he was saying it's not good for not only because the man was alone, but because he was alone in his job. Yeah. He realized that, oh, this is a lot of work for one man to do. So he was like, okay, so yeah, I definitely need to make more than one human, but I also need to make this next human female. Yeah. I'm a, right? I'm a, I need to make this ne next human female to like complement the male. And so it goes on to say that, you know, he showed Adam um, the, the animals that he created, right? Oh, yeah. And a lot of people, well, it could mean this. I mean, it's really up to y'all. Um, not really up to you. It's up to God. But, like, this is what I'm talking about, about Bible conversation. This is a conversation. So in the comment section, if you if you view it, oh, my goodness. <laughs> if you view it another way, please leave a comment about what your view is. But, like, I feel like a lot of people take that verse and they're like, oh, he was just kind of showing him um, his creations to find a mate for Adam. He wanted mm -hmm. Adam to choose a mate between it, right? But I actually believe that this is a, this was a test. 
oh. to Adam from God. I believe this is a test. This is God testing his creation to make sure that the, his creation works how he intended, but also that his creation understands his role. Very much so. In his, um, the job that God gave him, which was to govern the earth. Right. Yeah. And so I bring that up. Be, it's because God was sh- basically showing Adam um, what he was lacking by presenting him with the animals. You yeah. see, the animals, they had, everybody had a, ma- a, f- a female counterpart. Very much so. The yes. male saw a female counterpart, right? And so when God presented those, ad- those animals to Adam, he was basically showing him what he was missing. Mm. But he wasn't telling him what he was missing. He was trying to gauge if Adam would realize what he was missing, mm. but also if Adam would speak up about about his we, needs yeah mm-hmm. right because that's what god wants he wants us to basically vent to him god yeah. wants to be your therapist yeah okay he wants if anybody look it's it's amazing that people get therapists like jesus and therapy but highlight i said jesus first and then therapy so like please yeah. get a therapist but your therapists are also human they get drained like you can actually if you if you Look at I, I actually look at like therapists getting interviewed on YouTube and a lot of them say that it is draining to hear other people's problems because they have problems of their own, right? Yeah. And so therapists is. need therapists. <laughs> Which yeah. is like they they also need therapists because it's like a cycle. Like doctors need doctors. Look, it's crazy. But um <laughs> but like God is the going. is the therapist that never gets drained from hearing your problems. And so but that's digressing. Back to what he was doing with Adam. I just find that f- so fascinating that like kind of like you don't learn. A child doesn't learn until it, they they experience it yes, themselves. Yeah. You could tell a child, hey, don't touch fire. It's going to burn you. Yeah, don't, don't do that. But I don't feel like a child would really understand that until they touch fire. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I and they that. feel the pain themselves. And so this is kind of how I view this moment. God is saying, like, I could tell him he's lacking this. But he's never going to understand the value of of, of, of a female counterpart until he, he feels it, it himself. Yeah. Like he sees it for himself. Yeah. And that's a, that's that's actually what, you know, when you talk to your friends that's going through something. Oh, uh, yeah. And it's you like, tell them, you give them advice, right? Like yeah. I have to go to like relationship stuff because that seems to be the, the main issue for people nowadays. Can't relate. <laughs> yeah. But like say like your friend getting mistreated by by <laughs> hit, her, by. For me, her boyfriend or girlfriend or yeah. his girlfriend or something. And you like, you come up to your to your friend and be like, hey, yo, like that girl is not for you, bro. Like mm. you need to go get with somebody else. But nine times out of ten, they're not going to see it. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, or, not. Or you like, that girl's a liar. She's a manipulator. Like she, she straight lie. That's all she do is lie. Yeah. They're not going to see it until they experience it. <laughs> themselves like, right they like oh my god she straight up lied and then you just kind of look at them like damn y'all yeah you, they give you that stank they give you the yeah. stankiest face bro right the, it's the stankiest face like it stank <laughs> like i can't, I can't <laughs> I this I, can't, I guess but yeah so that's that's kind of how i viewed it with god 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 was not just god did, was not being naive into thinking that adam's companion was was amongst the animals Mm. Like he wasn't saying like yeah this dog is <laughs> this dog is gonna help you rule govern the earth hey, you know man's best guy friend. was trying to sh- was, was basically revealing he was giving Adam a hint but a cheat sheet you feel, <laughs> he was saying you're lonely and I could I could tell you what the problem is but I'm gonna see if you actually come to me remember because guy guy made us dependent upon him yeah. And so he was basically trying to see if his creation, his intent, was being understood and also being played out. Yeah. And God, I mean, Adam passed the test. Yeah. Because later he realized, mm. Adam basically said, yo, God, like, I ain't, I ain't find nobody. I'm still lonely. Like, I still need help. This ain't it. That, that crocodile tried to eat me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, uh, that's that's actually funny because I I feel like that probably had had that yeah, but like look, that lion tried to eat me, bro. I approached that lion, bro, and I was just I was being friendly, bro. 
I was like, yo, you want to help me? Like, <laughs> yeah, you, you want to help me govern the earth? And he straight try to try to end my life. <laughs> Cause I mean, like, yeah. Well, actually, that probably did it happen. Cause if I'm correct, they weren't afraid of us yet. Oh, well, it, it don't say that in the Bible, but I could see. Well, actually, no. When we read about Daniel. Uh, Daniel. Yeah, I feel like yeah. we could we could talk about that more. Yeah. When we read the book of Daniel, because yeah, that we'll deals with like the lions and stuff. I'm um not afraid. I don't even know what song you were singing. The lions and tigers and bears. Okay. Another thing is that God gave Adam the command. Not he didn't command him, but like he gave him the app- opportunity to name the beast. Ah uh, yeah, and I feel like that is that's actually another test. God was basically testing Adam to see if he was going to speak up about his issues and bring them to God and let God handle it, but also a test to see if his creation actually worked. His creation, uh, if Adam understood the, the 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 power and dominion that God gave him. Yeah, God gave us the He gave us the authority to govern the earth. So being able to name the creations, yeah, and that's what they were. And it goes deeper because, like, I could say you're a cow, but you're not going to do cow things yeah, because man. you say you realize I'm not a cow. Yeah. You know, but when God, when Adam named said, oh, yeah, this is a cow, that cow started doing cow things. It's the same way with God. When God names you, you start doing the things that you under do. that name because yeah. you're you. Right. So God is the only person who can give you your identity. I don't know. <laughs> God is the only one who can give you that identity, you know? He is. And so, like, that's why I feel like names, that's why I'm saying please name your children decent names, okay? Please. Ask God what their name is, please. please. Because that name, naming things are so important. Because when Adam named those animals, they started doing the things under that name. I'm going to name my son Jaquavion. Okay. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Please ask God for what the, <laughs> the name of your child is. Because names are so important. And so Adam passed that test. He passed yeah. both those tests because he named the animals. The animals started doing the things under the name that he gave them. So Adam realized his oh, dominion in his job. Um, and then he also... God was basically making sure that Adam didn't get a big head and realize that he and try to realize that he can probably handle his problem, his loneliness by himself. Are you going to come to me and tell me what your issue is so that I can come in and fix it? And he did. He created Eve. Yeah. And uh, also another thing. I'm sorry. I'm taking over the conversation. I'm not. I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna bring it to nah, you. It's all right. But like the way he created Eve. Yeah. Why didn't God create Eve the way He created Adam? Why didn't he just take more dust and create a woman? He took the rib of Adam. The reason he did that Mm -hmm. is because men and women are not supposed to be the same. Period. It's supposed to be opposite. Yeah. And one thing that I, the one thing that I really like was thinking about while I was um, just reading this chapter was it was the big emphasis on the rib part mm-hmm. people just brush aside it because they're like okay god can god can do anything he literally he literally can do anything okay he took a rib but y'all don't understand the value and like the deep meaning behind the fact that he took a rib yeah when you look at the qualities of a rib and what a rib does what does a rib do it protects your vital organs a rib also keeps your body wow. and your organs standing. Yeah. It keeps it upright. Mm-hmm. It keeps it in place. It keeps it in so place. So it's not sliding and moving everywhere. I feel like within God, not only was he trying to make it, you know, Eve, the opposite of Adam, mm-hmm. he was also trying to make Eve embodiment, embody the characteristic of a rib. Wow. That makes sense. It's because I like how you said he 
we are meant to be opposites. Yes. M- m- male and females. Of course. We are meant to be opposites, but we are also meant to work together to fulfill God's plan. plan. Yes. So although we are opposite, that doesn't mean that one has power over the other of or course. one is better than the other. We are made different, but made different so that we can work together yeah. and and it be just easier exactly. upon both our lives. Yeah. You know? And I'm glad you pointed it out because that's actually what I also pointed out is the fact that we are meant to be opposite. It's <laughs> yeah. okay that we're opposite. It's okay. That males and females are different. We're, that we're, we're cool. built different. We're literally built different. <laughs> because we each have a different role when it comes to God's plan. We all do, yes. But those roles complement each other. They do. I feel like it's very, we needed to hear this in this time because I feel like there's this big debate between Over, men and women. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's like, why are we fighting against each other yeah, when God's intention against... was for us to work together? Like, like, we're meant to be different. Exactly, bro. Like, why are like, we... Why are we, why is one trying to be better than the other? Why is one saying that they're better than the other? Like, no. If anything, we're, like we said, we're, we're both fragile in these <laughs> fragile human bodies. We both, we both can be annihilated yeah, like that. Annihilated. <laughs> okay, like Thanos, like, Eviterated. and you're gone. Like, so... I just feel like we're making it harder. We're making life harder upon you. What are you laughing at? I had a nerd moment. Okay. And I was thinking about like, notice how when Thanos snapped the heroes away, they turned back into dust. <laughs> Marvel, we on your head, we on your, bro. We on you, bro. We on your Disney, head. Disney, you're done. You're done, bro. <laughs> we, you read the Wait. Bible. Disney, don't come after us. I'm sorry. What you mean? <laughs> you read the Bible. <laughs> But that's a good observation. They do turn to dust. <laughs> You're gone. You're gone. I wish I had. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I had to really think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Think, think, think about what you say. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's an inside joke. And we're very inside. Okay. <laughs> um. But yeah. So like, yeah. I just feel like that's needed to hear because. For some odd reason, we feel like we need to be at war with each other. But yeah. God's intention was for us to be different, but also our differences complement each other. And that's actually, that dives into marriage, which we won't dive into. I'm really curious, if you are married, how do you view Genesis 2? Like, I mean, we could also talk about marriage, if that's something you guys want us to talk about. We're not married ourselves, but we yeah, do have an image. Do. Yeah of what we would want in a marriage. And my image of marriage has really transformed. If you really want to hear about that, I actually have a marriage episode. Um, It's not on YouTube. It's with our podcast, Brave Conversations. You can um, look us up. I'll put the link in the uh, description box where you can look at um, our podcast, Brave Conversations. And in season one, I talked about my initial view of marriage. And I talk about how that changed after I read Genesis 2 the first time. This is actually like my millionth time reading Genesis 2, and I'm still picking up knowledge from it. Yeah. Like, so don't just think, oh, I can read it once and I learn everything. Like, go back and read it again because you pick up on things that you didn't see before. Of course. There is a question I must ask of you and the viewers if you guys want to answer in your own opinion. Okay. At the end of Genesis, there is a quote that is said by the Lord where he says that Adam and Eve, I'm going to just sum this up in the in a me version, but he says that Adam and Eve are completely shameless of each other, despite being fully naked. But booty. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, and I also have something for you to think about too. My question is, how do you think it feels to be shameless? Ooh. How do you think it feels? How do you think it feels Cause to be shameless? Trust me. I know there's a lot of people out there that's probably thinking, I ain't got nothing to be ashamed about. I ain't They're, got no shame. No shame in But my I game. promise you, if you was to put that to the test and put you through every shameful thing in this earth. You can gonna, think of. You can think of. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to you're feel You're going to feel some type of way. You're going to feel, gonna feel embarrassment. Anxiety, fear, um, yeah, you're insecurity. Gonna, <laughs> you're gonna feel that way. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not saying this to come at y'all. All right, listen, I know we all. It's have like it. I'm not saying right. We, <laughs> it's a human thing. Yeah, it's a human. It's thing. It's another aspect. It's the. Re, it's another highlight of how we are dependent on God. Exactly. It's because of those emotions that we feel. And then another thing is, 
don't just think about how you are shame. Don't think about your shame as in just like, like when he when he when he points out the concept that they're shameless. He's not in in my opinion. I feel like he's not only pointing out that they're shameless within like their own bodies, like they can be naked around each other. I also feel like he's saying they're shameless up here as well. In the mind. And also even in the soul. Mm. They're just shameless. Yeah. So with that in mind, that goes back to the question, how do you think it feels to be shameless? I can actually answer that question. Well, I can't because I I can't I can't even <laughs> yeah. imagine being shameless. Yeah, like, but do you think they're shameless? Is because they they recognize that they are in the care of God. Yeah, and so they realize that there really isn't nothing to be ashamed about. It's because at the end of the day, God has our our best. Like God has our hearts. He has our bodies. He has everything in His care. And we know he has good intentions for us yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. That's a good question. Now. Really sit down. Put it in the um, comment section. Or if you're brave enough, um, send us a... <laughs> oh, sorry. I get to you. What the... Uh, <laughs> <sighs> send us a DM or a private message through our social medias. Um, and we would gladly, if you would allow us to share your answer and your insight, in the next episode, I really want to hear you guys. We, yeah. we gave you a lot of questions and things yeah. to ponder on in this. <laughs> and um, make sure that you yourself read Genesis 2. Yep. And if there is something that we didn't highlight or if there's a verse that stood out to you, please yeah. share that. Yeah. I mean, send um, send a video, send a, a yeah. message chat, you know, put a comment in the comment section, anything. Um, we really want to get these conversations going. Okay. Um, with that being said, that's the game. That's the game. <laughs> All right, y'all. Peace. Okay, so that was another episode of Bible, Bible conversations. conversations. Um, really ponder on those questions, and we already told you guys how to how to you know really voice yourself. Follow us on social media at Brave Combos. We are on Facebook. We are on uh, Instagram. We are on TikTok. Okay. Yes, we have a TikTok. Um, so, yeah, go follow us on that at Brave Combos. That is at sign B. We're not doing no renegade. <laughs> <laughs> that is at sign B R A V E C O N V O S. Make sure you also give us a follow or a like, however those platforms work. Um, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yes. You're already here. Just scroll down, hit that subscribe button. Yep. And make sure you hit that bell so that you can be notified when we post. Okay? Because you don't want to miss it. You don't. Make sure you go watch the other episode about Genesis 1. Again, I find it weird that you're hopping. <laughs> okay? It makes us uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, it really makes me scared. It makes us question. Exactly. It makes him do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make you do that. You dropped your lip. Why are you bringing up old stuff? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you like um, and, and um, share this content. If you feel like somebody else needs to hear what we talked about, or, I mean, just share the love. I mean, share, yeah. spread the gospel, spread Jesus, spread God. And I pray that the Lord keeps you, that He that his face shines upon you, and that he gives you under, like, love and peace and all that. That's a verse. I tried to, I tried to say it, but I couldn't remember it. <laughs> Hey, maybe it just wasn't meant to be. And I go, <laughs> it is meant to be. God wants his face to shine upon you. May he keep you. May he give you love and peace and joy this week, you guys. Um, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, and yeah. Oh yeah. Leave. Oh, <laughs> be gone. <laughs> be gone. <laughs>